Welcome back to my channel. I'm at the loft conversion project and we are through the first couple of days. Now what have we done? We've removed all of the old roof, we've got rid of all those slipped tiles, we've got rid of absolutely everything. We've got rid of the feather edge close boarding which is what holds the tiles on. And now we can see the roof structure and this video is a little bit about what happens to your roof structure as it gets old. The first thing I'll say is this is in good condition okay so I've seen a lot of roofs as soon as you start stripping stuff off you find all sorts of problems but here most of the water has stayed out of this roof there's been a couple of spots where water has got in I'll give you an example of that so right here there used to be a small chimney okay and the chimney used to have a back gutter the back gutter is basically where the slope, slope, slope of the roof comes down hits a lead box and then turns either side this is a point of weakness which is very common in a roof and you can see that the water had got in and rotted this connection here and over the years the chimney stack was removed someone pieced this in and the close boarding was probably holding it up but you can see how the moisture has corroded everything rotted it all through and that's gone so basically that's a typical problem that you find in a roof fortunately for us we're cutting the majority of this out of the way to make sure our new roof is the right shape because we're becoming a gable end on this side. So that's a typical example of what's wrong. Let's go and, go and tell you about the rest of the structure and why they move around a bit. Okay, similarly, there was a chimney stack here as well and that's also been removed. But you can see that the timbers are in good condition there so there was no problem with the original back gutter, no moisture getting in or no water getting in. This is from the wall there to here, it's a gable roof. That's why you see there's a level ridge, okay? So there's a gable roof and then the hip 10 starts. Now, all of this roof has been strutted down onto particular points in the house. Now, I, I suspect that these struts weren't, aren't in the position they might have started in because inside the house, there's a low bearing wall, which is very typical to most houses, which divides the bedrooms up. And that wall goes all the way through down to the ground and into, has got its own foundations. And most of the struts would have been positioned into there. What people tend to then do is reposition the struts because they want to get a bit more space to store stuff in their attics. And what they, they, they then put the struts where they shouldn't potentially be and that can actually lead to things moving. And I'll give you an example of that. This ridge board, I've got a laser set up in there. It's 60 millimeters, which is two and a quarter inches lower at the hip tend because what's happened is over the years it's fatigued and the struts have moved the purlins have moved and it's all just started to fatigue timber also shrinks and if you think about this you've got one pearl in there and you've got the rafters the purlin will definitely shrink in its height in its life so will the rafters and what that does the connections get a bit looser and it starts to get a bit floppy and a bit sloppy and of course there's a lot of load on here with the roof so that is why sometimes you get this movement. And then you've got this intersection at the front where you've got this hipped sort of bay. You've got a valley as well. And it's much, much less engineered than we do nowadays. Where we would now put like a 150 rafter to do this sort of work here, these are 100. And although this is like a really good quality softwood, like a redwood, so if you looked at the annual rings, you cut through that and you compare that to a new piece, it's I mean, it's incredible. You've got, it's got a real nice ring to it. So it's probably much more solid than new 4x2. But there you go. Another thing that happens as well, uh, common with a lot of roofs, is where the rafters, if you look here, where you've got most of the low force coming through, they start to slip off the back of the wall plate there. So where they would have been nice and tight, it's just all eased back. So that again, if something spreads, something drops. So that's what's happened to that as well. Also, when I check the levels inside with the laser, the existing ceiling joists have also fatigued slightly as well. So you've got to be really careful when you're converting a loft or even when you're in an attic. The ceiling joists were never designed for human traffic, okay? They were just there to support the ceiling and we'd never use a, a, a joist that small. So these are 100 mil, four inches, and they're spanning sort of near enough three and a half meters as well. So even though they have binders over the top, which you can't see because it's covered by the insulation, that ties them all together. They still move around. So you've got to be really careful. I'm a bit out of breath. I've just been down to get that microphone I dropped. Anyway, so the object of today is to basically cut out what we need to cut out. We're going to remove all the rafters apart from a few at the front. And that is it. We're going to get all of that out, tidy everything up, and then we can start thinking about getting the steels in 
to this loft conversion. Okay, so how are we gonna get the roof off? Now, deconstructing a roof is a little bit like putting one together. You need to know how to take it apart. So what I'll do is I'm gonna basically leave a few of the rafters and all the rest I'm gonna cut in situ. I'm gonna cut them all above the top of the purlin and that's gonna reduce them in half. So I'll, I'll cut it, carefully ease it away from the ridge without having to get up to the ridge because I can just use the leverage of the rafter to pull the nails out. And then I'll go around taking all of the jack rafters off. These are the ones that go up to the hips and I'll do those over the purlin as well. So what I end up with is the purlins, which are the section which is at the mid span of the roof, straight down. That will still form a triangle and everything will be really nice and safe. And then I'll do, then I'll be cutting the rafters off here and taking out that section. So I'll have lots of pieces of similar size. The um, valley rafter here, we're gonna maintain. We're gonna prop that up and we're gonna leave that because we're gonna come off of that with a new one. I may even take it out and put a, a slightly bigger valley rafter in, but I'm not quite sure yet. We don't really need it because we've got a nice steel beam which is running behind the line of the purlin. That'll have a load bearing stud wall which will pick the roof up at mid span and we can also support the valley at that point as well. So, um, because if we take the valley out, this is an open eave, We've got to cut it back to the plate there, which removes the support for the very bottom, but it is held by these rafters that come down. Um, and it's quite an awkward thing to do to get all of that to marry back up at this position without damaging the ceiling too much. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get all of the rafters out the way. We're gonna get them down into the skip. We've managed to only have one skip so far because we saved a lot of tiles to go back on the roof because these dreadnought tiles are absolutely beautiful. So the bottom of the bottom of the skip had tile debris, and then we've got to the left of the to the sort of left of the skip, we've got all of the batten that came off, all the feverish close boarding. People might be thinking, why aren't you reusing it now? It's got so many nails in it, and it's had it, it, it for me to actually start managing that and taking all those nails out. It's just so uncost effective. This will be separated when it goes back to the skip company. They remove all of the timber, they remove all the plastic, they remove all of the hardcore, they separate it all and it's all recycled. So that's a big part of what these companies do, especially the ones around here, they've got a big recycling plant. And I think that's really important as well. So that wood will get reused, even if it gets re reused as a fuel, it will still get reused. Anyway, let's crack on. I'll stick a time lapse on and we'll get this roof off. So we've gradually got most of this roof off, didn't take long. I mean, when you construct roofs, it's quite easy because you know how to take them apart. Um, and using the length of timber where we cut them, we can use that as leverage to actually push up and the nails come out of the ridge, for example, or where we cut here below the purlin, we can cut and then lift it up and the nails will come out of the purlin. Now, before I take this small section out of the front, I'm leaving this bit at the front here, this stays, this remains. But here we've got new rafters which will start from the wall plate here and go all the way up to a steel which is gonna go all the way through the top there, a big piece of metal. To cut these off, I'm just rough cutting them for now but all to somewhere near where I want them. So I've just got a little template that I can just do this with and mark there. I'm gonna tidy all of these up because I'm gonna join them with noggins back to some of the new roof. But then I'm just using a jigsaw as well because pretty versatile and unlike a circular saw, it's a bit more compact. And if the blade binds on a circular saw, it gives you a little bit of a kick. Less likely to bind on this and if it does, it will just stop. So um, I'm gonna cut this out. But before I cut that out, I wanna show you what else happens to roofs when they fatigue. I mentioned about the struts and the purlin. So if I just go in and show you here. So this is your purlin. This is your strut. Obviously that is your rafter. Now if you can see, Angus who's helping me has attached a piece of string from the top of the rafter to the bottom of the rafter. And if you can see how much space there is between that string, and that gives you an indication of how much everything's dropped down. If you look at this existing party wall here, this really nice, thick, solid party wall, um, it's like a fire break. So effectively, all of the timber work stopped either side, and then the roofers years ago cemented this up the middle as well. And so what happens is this obviously sinks, the struts are in the wrong place, they're bearing down onto something which isn't meant to be taking their load, because as I say, they were meant to be back onto a wall. 
everything sagged. So that's how much it sagged. So it's just a good indication of exactly what happens in some of these roofs. So I've just got to trim the bottoms of these off. I'm just leaving this here for now, this sort of gable here. I've got a corbel up there, which is where the two bricks stick out. All that's coming out because I've got to put a concrete pad in and some spreader plates for the steel to land on there. So that is about it for stripping the roof off. Um, yeah, it's come off really nice. Got lots of clearing up to do. You can see how much mess falls through a roof like this, especially when there's no uh, under slate as felt, which there wouldn't have been back in the day. But before I um, finish this video, I'll just cut one of these to show you exactly close up what that's all about. Um, this blade's a bit dull, but it's done the whole lot. The first one I cut, the very first one, I caught a nail that I couldn't see, so it took the edge off it a bit. But it's still good. I mean, there. <laughs> it still lasted the whole job, so I'm just going to do this one. And then obviously, the beauty of that is, is just using the leverage, it'll pull the nail out. Straight over. Another one for the skip. So we're just going to pull these out and get it all skipped.